Do you know how to Korea? 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 This is how to Korea. All right, welcome to another episode of How to Korea, where we teach you how to survive in Korea. I'm James, and we are on episode nine. Episode nine. That's episode right. nine. Yeah. So about two or three months in, since we actually started publishing, not since we uh, actually started this process. How far are we in the process? Like five months. Yeah. When did we start it? I didn't even know when we started. I know it was cold as shit. That's true. Yeah. Oh, it was cold. In the swimming pool. I remember we went inside and like everything fogged up. It was steam everywhere. Yeah. Oh. But, yeah, episode 9. Here we are. Welcome. Uh, Ian's going to tell you a little bit about today's episode. 안녕하세요, 여러분. Today's episode, we're going to be covering low birth rate again because last time we uh, started, but we don't have enough time to finish, so we're just going to finish our uh, thoughts and ideas on the low birth rates, and then um, we're going to talk a bit about PC Bong and Nore Bong in Korea, um, and then talking about a, a few other hobbies as well, and then... Um, we're going to end off with um, a couple of things that makes Korea a bit more special compared to other countries when it comes to like technology and Korea living in the future. No. In some parts. Uh, some parts. Yeah. yeah. A lot of parts. Yeah. yeah. More more than less. Yeah. So, uh, first yeah. off, the, the low birth rate. Do you have any shout-outs or any, anything you want to do? I don't think so. No? <laughs> no, not yet. All right. Um, the last episode, we discussed the... the low birth rates and the marriage right and then we said um there were some foreigners helping up the the marriage rates in korea yeah yeah, yeah. they're they're actively um trying to recruit foreigners to come to this uh, so i read this article recently about um they're providing working holiday no 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 they provide i forgot what the terminology is but something to attract foreigners to this country it's not a working holiday there's another term for it I'll say it if I remember it, but yeah, yeah, they're doing something that allows you to stay in something stay. I don't remember the term, but it's basically like it, they allow you to stay. They allow foreigners to stay in Korea for like a longer term, but I think it just goes back to they need to give more access and privileges to foreigners because there's so many restrictions. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Remember we were we were talking about the banks, uh-huh. right? The banks. I just saw an article in the week again that said. Um, there are three or four major banks that are like doing a big effort now to like, attract more foreigners to yep. their services. So they um, getting more people that that are able to speak English or translators or whatever into the banks. Mm. And those were the bank- banks we ma- uh, we, we mentioned. About. Yeah. So Shinan, Shinan, Hana, Hana. What, what's it was KB and the uh, Woody Bank was the other one. So Woody actually has some branches in America. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's a Korean bank, right? <coughs> Yeah, it's a Korean bank, but they have an American branch, a few American branches too. My first checking account in America was Woody Bank. Yeah. Oh. Oh, interesting. Yeah. I mean, the big ones are like Chase, Wells Fargo, TD. Do any of those exist in South Africa? I don't know any of them. JP Morgan Chase? No. Wells Fargo? No. The big ones in South Africa is called the Standard Bank, First National Bank, APSA. No. Capitec, I don't know. What the? No, we don't have any of those either. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so here are the stats <coughs> quickly. Um, every tenth marriage in Korea is international, right? So, so one, out out of, one out of ten. One out of ten. One out of ten marriages uh, are happen happening because of a foreign man or a foreign woman. Oh, sorry, sorry yeah. to hop in. I saw something on Instagram recently. Um, apparently, the rate of Koreans getting married to Japanese people has skyrocketed. Yeah, that's also increased. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, It's not as big as the other ones, though. It's not as big as the other ones, so yeah. we'll get to that, right? Uh, it's not as big, but, yeah, it's starting to increase a lot. Like, there's a big boom on that. Yeah, yeah. there's a big boom, yeah. right? So, um, <sighs> this is from 2023, right? So, one out of ten marriages in Korea is because of a foreign man or woman. Mm. Um, this is in 2023, and it's the highest since 2010. So, in terms of statistically, I mean, I'm sure we don't really know the answer to this, but are we talking about people with different citizenships, or are we talking about people that look like foreigners, like that don't look? I'm Korean? assuming the it's citizenship, citizenship right? yeah, because that's what's on file. Yeah, right? and I'm assuming that has to be the case. So that number might actually be higher because there might be Korean American citizens, like Korean whatever foreign country citizens. Yeah, but but isn't the mm, yeah I don't know. No, because once you get your citizenship in Korea, I'm pretty sure you have to. You're considered a Korean citizen. Yeah. Basically. So you it might, to, you it might to, be higher. You it's have to abandon your others. Because I don't think Korea does dual citizenship. 
Do they? I don't know. They might. Mo, I, do I they? I don't know. Let us know. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard someone told me recently. I can't remember who told me, but they don't do. I might be wrong. I might be mistaken. I know I can't have a dual citizenship. Okay. Because I have America doesn't allow you to have dual citizenship. So well, America believe, doesn't allow. Yeah, I believe. So I think it's not Korea. I think it's the other country. Maybe other country. I think Korea allows you to. Uh, speaking of, we're gonna have Mo here as a guest. Um, coming soon. Okay, cool. So we'll have our first uh interview session. First, yeah, yeah, nice. And we'll be speaking a lot of Korean. Um, I'll be translating for our viewers, for our American or our foreign viewers. I'll be translating English, but I think it's a good uh, change of pace for our Korean viewers because yeah, yeah, sure. The feedback I always get is I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's a lot of people like my Korean friends as well. It was like, uh, oh, it's so cool. Yeah, it's nice but I know them. Like, oh fuck! I yeah. wish it was Korean. Yeah. You know? Or at least Korean subtitles. Yeah. Okay, so one out of ten in 2023, right? The highest since <coughs> 2010, and then um, of 19,700 international marriages, 14,700 were between Korean husbands and foreign wives. Right. Of 19,000, 14,000 were... 19,700. Uh -huh. 14,700 were between Korean husbands and foreign wives. That's like 70%, bro. It's a lot. Yeah. Oh, holy crap. Um, but this is also including like Filipino, Thailand, Vietnam. I think those are the big foreign countries. Yeah, yeah. So... Um, Russia. The too. number co of couples consisting of a Korean wife and a foreign husband increased by 7.5%. Mm. But not as much compared to the men, 22.5% increase. I think there's a lot of Russian brides. I see a lot of foreign Russian women, like young foreign. Russian a lot Russian of Russians women. in Korea, actually. But they're like chilling with like these old Korean dudes, mail order brides. Maybe. Oh. So the percentage for um, foreign wives statistics, foreign wives, Vietnamese make up thirty three point five percent of the total. Like one out of ten, you're talking about. Well, out of all the the out foreign marriages, okay, right, the men. Korean men marrying foreign women, 33.5% okay. of those women are Vietnamese, 18.1% okay. is Chinese, and then 13.7% is Thai. That's high. I didn't expect Chinese marriages to be that high. Yeah. I don't know. Wow. Oh. Um, wow. Then, for foreign husbands, 27.7% are American, 184 Chinese, again, and Vietnamese is 13.7%. So you can see that complete shift. Korean women prefer American men, yeah, and Korean men prefer what was it Vietnamese? Vietnamese, women? yeah, still Asian but different type of Asian. Where's Japan on that list? They're not on that. No, list? it's a little bit. It's too low. Uh, yeah, but I guess it's starting to rise. Yeah, that that number has yeah. has gone up. And like Korean people love Japanese women because Korean men love Japanese women because they they act so cute. Like they're they're very yeah. cute. No, pretty as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I'm not gonna say this. Say what? No, I'm not going to say this. <laughs> no, I'm not going to say it. All right. No. Keep your secrets. I, I, uh, no, I'm not going to say this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway. Um, um, but there's what I find strange between the, the Korean men and <laughs> marrying Japanese women, etc. is there's such a hate for Japan no. from Korean people. No. They hate Japan. No. But you ask them, which countries have you been to? Japan is number one on that list. I think that's just ease of access. No, I don't of course, that's... ease of access. But I mean, you can't keep shitting on Japan and hating Japan and then go, that, oh, I love Japanese food. Oh, well, I love Japan. Oh, I love this. Oh, well, that. you got to be aware of these articles because some of these articles, you're going to see that like there are instances where, and this is in the past. I don't know if it's still happening now, but and I might be, I might be reciprocating this the wrong way. <clears throat> but when Korean people landed, like there were instances of when Korean people landed in Japan, either by ship or by plane, just to visit, they'd be greeted with these flowers. And, you know, Japanese people would give them these flowers, right? And these flowers were from Fukushima or, Fu yeah, Fukushima. With the nuclear? With the radio, yeah, they were yeah. like radioactive flowers, right? Like that, that was an issue. And then you got the whole issue about, I mean, most people are aware, but they're releasing the wastewater from the... I guess that's also Fukushima, yeah. the same same reactor. Yeah. But the Fukushima reactor, they're starting to release the wastewater into the ocean, and that's that's kind of a big issue too, yeah. right? Like seafood trade has gone down in South Korea, um, and that's 
there's a lot of hatred towards kind of things like that. And it's yeah. not just Korea at that point, right? You got not, China. Yeah, of course. But the thing is, China's doing the same thing. They also release nuclear wastewater yeah. all the time. Yeah. But China just does whatever that they want. Yeah, because it's huge. They power. don't give a shit no. of pollution, uh, nothing. Anyway, they just do what they want. Yeah. But there's also, if we go back to the history of the hate between Japan and Korea, for those who don't know, um, I don't know all the details, but obviously, uh, Japan invaded Korea during the war yeah. and uh, occupied Korea for oh, I don't know. a very long time. Yeah. Close to like 50 years, 70 years or something. Yeah. A long ass time, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if it was that long, but it was long. It was long, man. I don't think it was like 70 years, though. Maybe like 30? Maybe, I don't know. Well, anyway. Whatever, yeah. yeah. It was a long time. Yeah. You know? And um, obviously, the, the Korean people were basically slaves and to this Korean korean people that were taking over korea and korean people that were taking over korea oh, sorry japanese people that <laughs> took over korea yeah. the koreans were slave in their terrible living con conditions and basically it was nothing right yeah that's why um what makes this country so great in another sense is that when japan left this place started building and growing and growing and building and look at this is what now 50 years 70 years later look at this place well you know well how many other countries can say that they've done that well no. They recovered pretty quickly. Yeah. Very, and it was like quickly. 50, 70 years ago, Korea was yeah. basically a dirt road. Like just mud villages. Mud villages. Yeah. And yeah, like I see I see um there's another page that I follow. Oh, I need to save these names. But where the guy or the woman or the artist, whatever, takes these old Korean pictures yeah. from nineteen whatever yeah. and then uh, it's black and white and then he makes it into color pictures and whatever. No. Yeah. You can see the what it actually looked like when the Japanese were still in charge and so have you seen the comparison between a thirty year old man now and a thirty year old man like no, fifty no, no. years ago? Oh they look like they're seventy, bro. Oh really? Oh yeah. Oh. It's just it's completely different. Yeah. Living conditions and et cetera, I'm sure it was just sure. different, but yeah. they it looks so different. Even like thirty, forty years ago, you look at Korean people and like they look so much older. Yeah. And I think that's what drives their obsession with like plastic surgery and Botox sure. and all these all these little procedures, right? Like they just And it's also much cheaper to do that in Korea compared to other places. It is, but you gotta figure there's that much demand and that's why there's so much competition mm -hmm. and everybody's just lowering their price to get it done, right? Like and they're good. Korean people are good at plastic surgery. Yeah. It's just but you get the I think it, there was this one the saying was like Gangnam woman or something. Yeah, yeah. And they all look the same. Yeah. And and they do. Like but that's the you funny know what? Part. For for me, maybe I'm still a bit too new to this, but for me it's hard to tell when the Korean woman has had surgery or not. Like I go with uh, Korean friends, we go out somewhere wow. and then the girls tell me, Yeah, she had a nose down, she had a lips down. It's like really? Yeah, you could tell. Really? You could tell. I can tell with a foreign woman, easy. You know? I actually can't tell with foreign women. I, I can tell see. with Korean women, That's but I can't tell with foreign women. For me, I can tell with a foreign woman, but yeah. with Korean women, it's like so sometimes it's very obvious. It's very clear. You know what I mean? If you if you look the way the what you're looking for is like something that seems out of place. Out of place. Out of first proportion. Of all, yeah. Disproportionate. Yeah. Second of all, yeah, it's just something that looks beautiful on relative to the other features. Like mm. not beautiful. Something that looks perfect in terms of shape, right? So like if you have a nose that's like a, a lot of Koreans when, what they have issues with is the height of their nose, and I mean like I don't know if you call it height but like like where the bridge ends. So a lot of Korean people the first from what I hear my experience I'm not shitting on Korean people I'm Korean, but a lot of them can't wear sunglasses because this bridge over here is too low, so the sunglasses drop down to like here. Sure. And they have to keep pushing it up. That's okay. one of the big issues. Yeah. The other one is their their noses are it's like i don't know how to describe it it's flatter i guess it's not raised as much mm, and that's like kind of european nose yeah yeah and that's when you see nose jobs most korean people when they get nose jobs that's what happens is they they, they kind of like lift get that this. little michael jackson nose guy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 a little bit not not as bad as michael jackson but <laughs> nothing's as yeah. bad as he's oh uh, well <laughs> dude, he's still the greatest pop artist of the, uh, yeah. of the generation yeah. you know but but that's i think like that's what they aim for is yeah. like this like perfectly triangle shaped mm -hmm. nose right and that's one of the big features that you can tell um the other big one sorry yeah the other big one is cutting their chins so to it make it sharper more, to make it sharper yeah you know? yeah what were you gonna say? um what is the procedure that a, a lot of people do like they cut their eyelids double eyelids double eyelids yeah please explain to the people because what the, f well, the kids, like i had a small. student sorry that 
explained to me that she had that done. Yeah. I was like, I, I can't even see the difference. Like, what the hell is, what's going on? No, there? so what you do is, like, when you... Korean people are naturally born with smaller eyes, as is the stereotype, and it's, it's true for a reason. Most right? Asians, yeah. I guess, yeah. And what, what they do is they... So, like, like, I don't have double eyelids, right? But you, you can't... Cause when I open my eyes... My eye. There are no doesn't. lines or anything. Basically, what they do is it folds this line into your eyelid. Further oh, okay. Into your so you just get a fold. Basically, basically what ah. it does is it's like a fold and a. I don't know the exact procedure. Yeah. But it's either a fold or a cut, and then you insert it. So when you open your eyes, it folds into your eyelids, and what the effect is, it makes your eyes look bigger. Like you naturally have it. Yeah. You. I don't know. I mean, you didn't get surgery for it, but your eyelids naturally. When you open them, it goes go in. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially like near the end of your eyes, right? Yeah, it po- it goes in, and that's it's natural for a lot of foreigners, but Koreans it's not really natural. Yeah. And because of that, their eyes look bigger when they get the procedure. Sure. And it makes them look more beautiful, quote unquote. And that's also if you look on social media, a lot of them use a filter to make the eyes look bigger. Yeah. Bigger and they're just like huge, yeah. like disproportionate. Yeah, it looks strange. Yeah, but they stop doing that. At this point, for Korean people, like that procedure is no longer considered even plastic surgery. It's like a, it's like a like getting middle braces. school graduation gift. Okay. Yeah, it's like getting braces basically. Yeah. yeah. And it makes a difference, bro. Really. Not so much for men. Like when men get it, they they look more feminine. For some reason, I don't know why, but they look more well, feminine. Well, Korean men have no problem looking feminine. I don't know. They don't. We, we'll, we, actually, that's a big thing we should talk about, and how I've adapted to some of that. So let's talk about that. Well, um, let's go into it. <clears throat> well, before that, so Korean men when they get the procedure, they look a little bit more feminine. But Korean women when they get the procedure, it it ch- completely changes the way they look completely. And then you add the eye eye mac makeup on top of that, and it's like, you know, just it's, yeah. it's insane, right? But um, yeah. So Korean men. Korean men. Let's, let's, Listen, let's, obviously, it's not all Korean men, right? Let's no, get this right off the bat. No. Um, and this isn't to say we're shitting on these men. It's it's really just it's a preference and it's a culture. It's, it's and, a preference, and it might be a, a culture thing. And um, we respect it. We respect yeah, it. Well. I'm I'm tr- I'm trying I'm trying to learn how to respect it. I'm being honest. For me, it's like such a huge difference in culture that no. it's hard for me to get to terms with it. You well, know, this ties back to we're gonna tie back to low birth rates. We're gonna tie back to everything at this point. But yeah. it, like dramas, pop stars, K-pop stars, they all have long hair. They all have like they just look so feminine. They wear makeup. They wear makeup and, and like it's, it's these like, K-pop stars. They have these small, sharp faces. Yeah. You know, and it's becoming the norm because they they just they grow up watching that on TV. Yeah. So it's like that is supposed to be the perfect image because you're on TV. Yeah. Right. Like you're famous, which means that you have a face that's desired by other people. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. So guys want to look like that. They do. Yeah. And some guys pull it off and they don't look like they don't look feminine. They it just fits them very well. Yeah. And some guys are just like, dude, you're trying too hard, man. Yeah. Like just no. Yeah. Just be, you know, be yourself, bro. Like I had a guy that worked with us, he used to wear makeup to work. Yeah. Know? And then like bathroom breaks or whatever, go to the bathroom, do my business and he's in the mirror Applying touching up and pa 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 pa. He so, was a strange. He was a stranger though. Not not because of that. He was yeah, he was weird. So I understand a lot of Korean people. They're very self conscious about their skin complexion. Mm. So if they have breakouts or if they have bad skin, they try to cover it up. Yeah. So the big one that they use in Korea is called BB cream. Okay. And I, I guess it's popular in other countries now too, but it's basically like a foundation, right? It's it's basically a concealer. I okay. think that's what I don't I don't know the makeup terms. Maybe neither. I think it's a concealer because it conceals all the all the. The pits and the uh, scars, and scars from the acne. Okay, what is foundation? The first one? I, I I don't know. It has to be the first one. Foundation. Know. When you build a house, you build a foundation. I, I think I think it's like you put it on your face so that you can put the rest of your makeup on and on top of look, that. I, I I guess I think that it, it makes sense. That's what the word foundation means, yeah. right? So I I don't think it's foundation. BB cream is to more the like ladies out there. Please give us a step by step explanation. What the hell? Yeah, we're we're looking for a female mo at this. Oh point. well, it's, we're in Korea, so we can awesome other guys as well. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know any me- any men that wear makeup though personally. I, I, I knew the one guy, but yeah, I didn't know this one guy, but I don't know him. I don't know him very yeah. well. But um, mm. but yeah, so it's BB cream. It's kind of like a concealer, but concealers, I believe, to my knowledge, is is like a spot concealer, 
right? Like where you have a spot, you just kind of put it on, okay. and blend it with the rest of your face, I think. Yeah. Um, but BB cream, they put it all over their face because the color doesn't match the color of your skin, I think. So they try to get it as close as possible. Yeah, but yeah. It stands out if you put it in just one area, I think. And is that like also whitening? Because I know a lot of products in Korea, you'll read on the product, it says whitening cream, whitening, 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 whitening. I, I, I don't know. I think it makes your skin whiter. I don't know. <laughs> because uh, Korean people, uh, well, a lot of them, especially women, they don't want to get tanned. They don't want that brown skin. But that trend is changing now. Well, you need to talk into the mic. Where are you going? That trend is changing now, especially um, if you look at like, have you seen that show Physical 100? Yeah. So after that show, <coughs> After that show, um, like, I mean, even before that show, exercising was becoming more of a trend. Uh, people were starting to work out more. And then body profile pictures is where you kind of just work out, build your body, and you take a photo. Yeah. That was trending. There were also a lot of influencers doing that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that was trending way before Physical 100, right? So yeah. what was happening was in order to get a good photo, you need a tan because if you're just pale... Sure. Yeah, if you look pale, at any bodybuilding competition, you don't get the contour exactly. Right. Yeah. So the bodybuilding comp competitors too, they put the bronzer on their skin and they get tans, and it makes it, the definition show a little yeah. bit better. So that started happening, and then people started tanning themselves. So it's funny because when you walk, when you look at it, even the bodybuilders, their face is white. Yeah, but the rest of their body, so they still the want to maintain that like yeah. white like porcelain wear, face. Yeah, if I wear a suit or whatever, you I, just see the white normal, face. Yeah. But if I take that off, you could check it's all, all the lines. It's, complete, it's like a complete contrast, yeah. right? Like a different body on a different head, mm. and that's where it started happening. But I think for the most part, it goes back to, and I don't know why, but they just Korean people like white people. They just like white people, and they want to be like white people, and you know, it's just maybe a historical thing it's probably has it has to do something with the history but it's just yeah, well, maybe when mo comes on we can ask him oh uh, maybe because maybe. yeah like i said a lot of the products that you see it's whitening 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 they're oh. obsessed with having white skin and white complexion oh. um and then yeah back to the guys and the makeup and stuff like i said you do you do you whatever you want to do um for me it's just so difficult to I grew up playing outside, eating dirt, yeah. climbing trees, getting... S I can't tell you how many stitches I've had all over my body. From well, just that doesn't have to... Do no, 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 no. I'm getting to a point, right? Yeah. Playing rough, yeah. right? Working with yeah. my hands, doing a hard shit. My dad raised a man or yeah. tried to raise a man, you know? Yeah. And uh, to. <laughs> I, I think he did a good job. Anyway, <laughs> with the... South African community, the Afrikaans community especially, no. we are known for being like the farmers and, you know, like those type of guys, the fucking, the rugged guys. No. And also playing rugby and I've my whole life played rugby, you're surrounded by men with a lot of testosterone, no. a lot of fucking sometimes anger issues and shit like that, no. right? And then I come to Korea and you sit at a bar and there's a guy next to you and he's got makeup on and you know what I mean? He's doing his hair and he's keeps looking at a little mirror that he's got. And then straight away in my mind, that guy's gay. Yeah. You know? Your first impression. My first impression, like 100% gay. I think besides South Africa. But then Africa, you find out, yeah. no, he's he's not gay. That's his girlfriend next to him. Right. He just does makeup. And I'm like, what together. the hell? Do it together. But it's that, that, that whole trend going back to like, I, I think, and <laughs> this gets very opinionated, but... You know, like, for example, Jordan Peterson, right? Yeah. Like, I'm a big fan of Jordan Peterson only because he, at, at this time in our lives right now, like, it's not okay to be men that oh, we're no. accustomed to, yeah. right? Yeah, no, like, it's shameful. No, it, it is. You, you're, yeah. you're, what is it, mansplaining and your, yeah. and your privileges and blah, blah, blah. Like, you can't be a man yeah. without... Toxic masculinity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, that kind of culture, that kind of mindset just kind of just... I... I I say I want to say I understand where it comes from, but as a man, it's kind of just like, as time progresses, it becomes more difficult for us to be who we are naturally, right? Like we have to try to conform more to society, yeah, and that becomes very difficult at a certain point. Um, so when it comes to like Korean men being more feminine, that's kind of just ingrained in their culture, and I don't know at what point it started. I'm pretty sure it had to do with the rise of K-pop. 
Yeah. But the me- the way men are portrayed in Korean dramas too, they're not like these macho like men, right? They're like very sensitive, caring, exactly. nurturing men. Some of them ha- look good. They have a nice body. But, but the way they act, the way gentle. they carry themselves. Yeah. yeah, And that's kind of the accepted trend here. And that's what you kind of yeah. grow up watching. Right? And then you see, uh, what's his name? Ma Dong Sok. Yeah. Ah. And he's popping off right now. He's, he's a popular. big macho man, manly yeah. man. Yeah. But you don't see him with a woman in the movies. No. And he that's never the gets the girl. That's the fucking problem. Yeah. Is you see all these dramas and like you see all these beautiful women with these men who are so sensitive and caring and feminine. And it's like, that's why all the men... So... It, it's a double standard for both men and women, right? So men think they have to behave this way to get a woman. Yeah. But it's actually a reality because women watch these dramas and expect men to behave this way. Mm. So it goes both ways. And like, they're kind of, it's like a never ending loop. Yeah. And they just keep acting in ways that they're not. Like, yeah. people by nature are not like that. There are some people, of, of course. Of course, yeah. But yeah. people, just like, it's all effort. And it goes both ways. I think a lot of men want to be soft and caring, and then it's like, no, nah, I can't do this. No. A lot of women want that soft and caring guy, and they until they have it, one, and, and it's then, like, oh, no, yeah. I don't like this. Yeah. yeah. So, do you do you know the show House the, with the doctor? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I've been watching that show recently, mm-hmm. and there was one episode about a guy who had damage to his prefrontal cortex, and that controls your your kind of uh, I guess your honesty. Okay. And it was interesting to see because it was refreshing, first of all, because the guy is like just spitting. Like he, he ha- he's married. He has a kid. And he um, he was married for like 40, 50 years. Uh, no, 20, 30 years. Happily married kids. And he gets this condition. And all of a sudden, he started blurting out to his wife. He's like, I don't, you know, you're, you're not that smart. <laughs> like, I was know, like, he's completely honest. Just completely honest. He, there's no filter. Okay. He can't do it. He can't provide a filter. So he's, you know, this whole life, he's like this perfect man. He's trying to act. And then... Without that, like, societal, without that filter. Yeah, this is the real me. This is the real me. And it's like, you, you know, you're really not that smart. And, like, you're you're doing okay for where your intellect is. But you shouldn't really be proud of yourself for your intellect. And it's wow. like he just shits on her. But he doesn't do it in a mean way, right? He's, yeah. just think, he's just saying what he thinks. And I think the reason I'm saying this is because it ties back to how people are psychologically, right? Like, we we as human beings, as animals we act certain ways which you know society restricts right yeah like if there wasn't any rules if there wasn't any conformities we'd be out killing and we'd be out fighting and we'd just be beast you know and you know what and it's 2024 and in today's day and age especially with the internet and social media and technology and everything you're never gonna make everyone happy no never no. You can please the, the target audience that you want to please. No. Someone will be unhappy about it. Someone will be upset oh. about it. If you look at any post on social media, Twitter or X, uh, Facebook, Instagram, there's going to be someone oh, hating haters, that yeah. It doesn't hatering, matter bro. what. The, it can be a cute little puppy. Yeah. You know, I mean, everyone like, loves puppies. How dare you put a picture of a puppy? Yeah. Like, that's, yeah. that's animal Someone abuse. is going to fucking hate that. Yeah. Someone's going to hate that. Yeah. Because that's the world that we live in today. It is. You know? It is. It's just people are sensitive. And yeah. I don't know what drove society this way, but that's where we are right now, right? So maybe I'll tell 50... you what it is. What? We have it too easy. Maybe. I also listen to Joe Rogan. I don't know if you guys picked it up in the way I speak, but I also listen to Joe Rogan. And I share a lot of his ideas. I heard about this. But there's obviously some, not everything I agree with, but most of the things I agree with and the guests that he has on. But uh, one of the ideas is that we have it too easy. Our lives are too easy. That's why we have so much time to hate on other people's pics about their puppies yeah. and we have so much time to just talk shit about anyone and everything so i remember listening to that episode and i think what his his whole thing was like like he he brought up 9-11 and he's like when 9-11 happened people banded together they yeah. were just being they were just being people yeah normally right and he's like to that point to what you were saying we don't have enough problems so we try to look for problems exactly and we try to make try our and own create problem. the we own recreate problem. these problems yes. because that's just also how the human mind works, yeah. right? Like we, we're problem solvers. Exactly, naturally. and I was, I was, um, that guy that he was referring to uh, the book there. I think it's called Chaos or something. Is the book that he was talking about? I don't about. remember who he was interviewing. Anyway, but I read the book that one of the books that he recommended. One of the guys that he had on, and in this book, this guy talks about um, anywhere in the world where there is chaos or where there's um, war or where there's anything going on. Yeah. 
those the men and women roles disappear oh, completely absolutely you know what i mean oh you mean no they're more clearly defined more yeah that's yeah, so yeah. I, i'm talking about today's men and women ah, roles and right, all that right, bullshit right. That, that's out the window yeah. Men go to fight in the war. Men go to fight stay in the war. And they the women stay in the care. Yeah. yeah. Then, That's then there's no is. problems. There's no issues. No yeah. one's complaining. No yeah. one's, you know, because there's no time to go make up your own problems or find problems with this. No. There's or no tell time the, to be on Instagram. Yeah. Being like, yo, what are you doing? <laughs> like, and like, yeah. soldiers, stop being so manly. Like, be less manly and yeah. fucking, <laughs> yeah. Put makeup on before you go shoot the fucking yeah. terrorists. Or women, if you're manly yeah. enough, come fight in the war with us, right? Like, that's what it comes down yeah. to. And some women. But basically, that's the premise of the book. Anytime there's war, and it's not only about gender, but it's just like people as a whole. It's war, yeah. You know, people as a whole, they come together in time of war, in time of need, and um, that's what it comes back to. And also in Korea, and also in America, there we have it too easy. We do. We, you Especially know, life's too Korea. fucking easy. Especially, Especially Korea. in Korea, yeah. life's too fucking easy. It is. It is. And yeah. we just sit there and we just we're just keyboard warriors, kind of hiding behind our screens, just yeah. shitting on people with our fucking five G internet. Wow. Wow. Yeah. It's just it's just what happens when we we get too comfortable, and yeah. it's not going to get less comfortable. If anything, it's going to get more comfortable. So the problems we're experiencing now, they might be nothing compared to what happens 10 years, even five years from now. It's completely different. But if an alien finds this video or if a new settler finds this video about 50 years when the earth is wiped out. Like and subscribe. Yeah, make sure that's the first (laughs) thing you do. (laughs) Yeah. Um, But please, just we're explaining society to you as it is. So, you know, you can use this for historical purposes. Yeah, but that's just that's just what Speaking it is. Speaking of, right dude, um, on Netflix, Three Body Problem. Have you seen it? No. Oh, Three Body Problem? The strangest name. Three Body Problem. It's a movie? It's a series that just came out. Three Body Problem. Three Body Problem. Do yourself a favor. I watched it on Sunday. I started watching the first episode. I finished the whole thing on Sunday. How dude, many episodes are there? Uh... Eight, nine, ten, around there. Three, the number three or the yeah, the number three body problem. Guys, do yourself a favor, go watch the thing. If you guys are into, uh, it kind of gives a Black Mirror vibe. Ah, uh, it's the creators from Game of Thrones. Oh shit! I'm definitely watching this yeah. now. It's yeah, it's the creators from Game of Thrones yeah. or the directors or the something from Game of Thrones. Okay. Um, they started this thing, dude very very cool good very very cool good. unpredictable you don't know where the story's going um just gets weirder and weirder but yeah very, you ever very watched cool the man in the high castle no oh, it's not that's one you told me about right okay. yeah with the alternate universe and stuff where the nazis win the war yeah yeah oh, it's amazing i, I need to watch it i need to remember yeah. to watch it um okay so so aliens we got to aliens we got to aliens let's go back to um like so, I said, so actually, we're, while we're talking about Korean men being feminine, yeah. Um, so to my point, I, I've actually shat on Korean men and their habits and their the way they act, for my whole life, right? Because it's like I'm American, so when you see a Korean man wearing makeup, it's like that's not what men do, right? But as I've lived in Korea, there's a few things that I've adapted that's like, okay, I understand. Me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I get it. I completely <laughs> get it, right? And it's like, I, I will never wear makeup. That's just the person I am. I will never wear makeup. Yeah, no, nah, okay. If I you draw wear, a line there. Yeah, you yeah. want to wear makeup, you go for it. You yeah. do what you got to do, but I will never wear makeup, right? But I started carrying, and I used to shit on people so hard for this, but I started carrying a Merce. Do you know what a Merce is? Yeah, I have one too. Yeah. And, and and it's well mine's a little satchel mine is like a like a it's like it's, okay it's yeah, now i draw the line there i'm it, not gonna do that it's like mine's big, a little satchel like a little Indi- satchel uh, is worse than a big shit, actual man. Indiana, like a jones, indiana jones indiana jones no you're no fucking indiana jones <laughs> with the satchel bro. don't indiana fucking jones nah, i don't do a nurse that's <clears throat> but the reason that i that i started using is because one of my really good friends in korea he has a nurse and he's like one of the manliest men i know like this motherfucker is just he's like a dude you know he's not like he's not feminine anyway he doesn't wear makeup yeah he doesn't talk sensitive he's like he's rough with the way he talks and like he's a man and he has a nurse and i was like fuck what do you put in there why do you carry yeah. that like why do you have that and he's like i just carry all my shit because i don't want the lining in my pockets and i don't want to carry all this shit in my pockets because yeah. it's heavy and i'm like okay that makes sense i still don't want to carry it but it makes sense but let me see your merch real quick. Yeah. So he gives it to me and I look through and he has 
everything in there. Yeah. Wallet, ID, cards, car, car keys, keys, phone, yeah. cologne, like you know, just like everything that a man needs to have on him at all times. Yeah. And I look at it, I'm like, okay, this is making more sense. So then I kind of just start. I get this I get one from the market, like in the fucking like like twenty, thirty dollar ones. Yeah. And like it's a it's a game changer. It's a game changer. Like the winter time, you don't I don't carry it around as much. I yeah. don't carry it at all in the winter time because you get all these deep pockets with your winter jackets. Sure. But the summertime, but the summertime bro, time, yeah. You put everything in there and it's like you you feel like a free man. Exactly. Yeah. And it's mm. it's so it goes against every fiber of my being and how I grew up and how I was raised. But once you start carrying it, yeah. you can't go back. It's like Crocs too. <sighs> I started doing that with Crocs in Korea and like I, I, I shat on Crocs so hard. Yeah. I was like, why the fuck? I'm still, any- I'm still in that phase and I think I'm going to stick in that phase. Dude, you wear them one time and it's like, you just can't go back. That's why I won't even try them. Don't like, try them. I'm because the moment you slip your feet into, feet into those Crocs, yeah. the first time you wear them, it's like, they're not like, so slippers. Slippers are soft, they're cushiony, yep. right? Crocs are not. They're hard, they're they're tough. But just convenience-wise, first of all, it slips in. And the protection you get is because, you know, slippers, you, your, your toes are exposed. But Crocs covers your toes. And just something about that extra layer of protection, like... It's a it's a blend between shoes and slippers, and you kind of get the bo- best of both worlds. I still don't like the way they look. They look like shit, and I'm never going to like the way they look. Yeah. But in terms of comfortability, in terms of putting it on, taking it off, going somewhere, slipping it on, it's the best thing ever for me. And I just I I, I haven't worn sneakers for the past, even in the winter time. I wear Crocs in the winter. I haven't worn sneakers for God knows how long. Ever since I got Crocs, never sneakers. You might have a problem. You might have to go see someone about that. I think that. I do because yeah. I will. I literally wear them everywhere, and like that. And then as you can see, my hair is getting a little bit long too. Like that. This that's less Korea. I think what what the reason for that being, it's more accepted in Korea for men to have long hair, and it's it's accepted in America too. But mm. it's kind of like the norm to have long hair in Korea. But I've always wanted to have a man bun. I've always wanted to grow it out and do a little man bun. Yeah. And I think living in Korea has allowed me to be more comfortable growing my hair out. Right. So like, but yes, you still can't grow a beard. That's I not. Can. No, no, no. I mean, like in Korea, most men ah. don't grow beard. No, that's that's not hot yet. It's not. It's not like yeah, a phase yet. But not... it'll 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 come. Maybe, but I don't know because uh, I remember the first time uh, I encountered. Like uh, a guy with a beard. I was uh, back in Chungju, standing outside with a, a friend of mine, a yeah. Korean guy. And uh, this other Korean man walked down the road and he's got a beard going. And I told my friend, oh, you don't see that every day. No. The guy with a beard. No. And then this guy's like, yeah, that dirty fucking monkey. That's what he said, dude. What? Korean man, about another Korean man with a beard. Yeah, that dirty fucking monkey. You know what it is? That's just jealousy, man. Because the way I see it, most Korean men don't get full they don't get full yeah no yeah because even me i get spots Fuck, even me dude yeah yeah so i can never get like that full yeah. look lu- what's that word not luscious i guess luscious. lush lush yeah. yeah that full lush beard yeah. with, like that trends oh, down yeah, i'll never get that yeah I, I mean i've tried growing it and yes with a little bit of trimming it looks okay but at the same time it just kind of looks dirty as opposed to like and I mean that in the purest sense. Yeah, it does look strange because, like, like I said, a, a guy with a Korean beard, that, it seems out of place. Yeah. I don't know, maybe because I'm used to not seeing anyone with beards or... But if you can grow one, go for it. You yeah. know? Like, I think most people, it's just they can't grow a nice beard and yeah. that's what's stopping them. Mm. And I think that's the, where the jealousy kicks in. And it's maybe. Like, oh, look at that dirty monkey. Yeah. It's like, no, you just can't I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm curious to see, like, I wish I could put a poll up here and say, like, what's the, what's the deal with the Korean men with a beard? Like, why... I think we could do that on Instagram because I remember when I was posting the shorts, there was something. You can create said, a poll, yeah. You can create a poll. Maybe we should do that. So I thought about doing it for the last one, oh. but then I didn't know how it would translate to YouTube, because the description would say, "Here's the poll, please vote," mm. and then you go to YouTube. What if we just create a new one? Or I could just get rid of that part in the description to YouTube. I could anyway, we'll too. figure that out. Oh. Yeah, I'm very curious to see. Like, yeah. what's the deal with the Korean men in the beards and stuff? Yeah. Well, that, this is one Because, like shows. I said, I had one guy just saying, look at that dirty fucking monkey, yeah. where I'd love to hear other opinions, like, what's the deal? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess we touched enough, and we shut enough on the, the K-pop guys. I think, it, so, I think this all ties back to low birth rate, um, somewhat, right? Kind of. 
where women have these extra high expectations, men have a certain standard that they have to meet, a certain way they have to look, a certain way they have to act. And for most people, it's very difficult to do unless you're a celebrity, right? And that's kind of the one of the barriers that is leading to the low birth rate in Korea. That along with, I don't think it's a matter of sex. Sorry. Um, no, probably not. I don't know. Anyway, another thing that came to my mind was also the work ethic of Korean people. Because mm-hmm. a lot of Korean people, I don't even know if they have the time to be in relationships or to get married or to have children. It depends on the company you're working it for. It depends but, on the company and everything. Yeah. But I mean, just like, <laughs> I mean, for myself, I work hard. When I get home, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to do anything. I just want to eat my food, yeah. watch some TV, unwind, yeah. go to bed. Yeah. You know what I mean? On the weekends, fine. But during the week, I just want to do me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure I can't be the only one. You know, yeah. Maybe with a lot of Korean people working their asses off, the last thing you want to do is get home and chat about how your day was and I was stressed and I was this and I was that. Well, that's that's uh, that's like marriage. That's I think it's that's marriage. Yeah. yeah, I think what it, th- that's. But I don't think people in Western countries work as hard as in Korea. No, and that's it's it's a societal, it's a cultural pressure where, for some reason in Korea, and I completely disagree with this, is the longer you work, the better worker you are. It goes against everything that I believe in because if you're a good worker, you shouldn't have to work so many hours to get the shit done. Yeah, your task has to be completed. Too, yeah. Right? yeah, fast and efficient, right? The mm. faster worker you are and the more shit you get done faster, the better worker you are. I guess it depends on the line of work. Maybe, maybe. But for some, like some, some companies, it's like you just kind of sit there and like mm. you can't leave until your boss leaves. Like that's the kind of shit that happens, right? And it's like... Well, what's the point of me sitting here wasting my time if I'm not contributing in any helpful way? Yeah. I finished everything I'm supposed to do. I'm getting punished for being a good worker, right? So then, and I don't understand why Korea is so good at working because that whole mindset is like, well, I'm not going to be a fast, good worker because I have to stay here anyway. I might as well just take my time might doing, well take this, time, doing yeah. this work. Yeah, And like that mindset just completely boggles my mind. But Koreans, are they work hard, right? Like, it's it's one it's both sides. They work hard, but at the same time they have to stay. And also they play hard. Oh, I wanted to uh, mention um, hueshik, right? Yeah. So uh, please explain to the people what is a hueshik. <laughs> a hueshik is a company gathering. Company gathering. That's basically what it is. Basically. Yeah. Right. It involves drinking and eating. Yeah. Okay. Um, for my line of work, I've been an English teacher in Korea and I've been in a couple of weird shakes before, right? Um, it is a weird thing, especially for your first time. If you go to a weird your first time, it's a weird environment because you don't know really what to expect. You say everyone's going out for dinner and you have this idea, oh, we're going to sit down, we're going to eat our dinner and, you know, go home. Because all you know is how they, how they act at work. Exactly. They have their work mask yeah. on. Yeah. And then you go out on a weird shake and then you are stunned by what's going on around you. Oh, yeah. Everyone's drinking. Well, not everyone, but most people are drinking. Um, so my first place, my, my director, right, um, he basically never spoke mm. to me at work because mm. um, he, cho- he was in charge of the business aspect and mm. then his wife was in charge of the school and the teaching. Okay. But this, Mr., this, I'm just calling him Mr. Um, he, Mr. Mr. J. <laughs> Mr. J never spoke English or oh. he never spoke, oh. period, right? Oh. So you say good morning, goodbye, good morning, goodbye, that's it. Yeah. Then we went to our first wish yeah. and all of a sudden, Mr. J is pouring soju for everyone, yeah. spilling soju because you hold your cup, two hands and all that stuff and then he pours soju all over your body yeah. and then he laughs and hits you on the back and then he starts talking in English, yeah. oh, sure. not bad, yeah. uh, in English and we're having drinks together together you go to noribang usually we ended up in noribang karaoke he, for karaoke know, um yeah. end up singing a couple of songs and then yeah he's gone he leaves monday back to work and now you think hey mr j nope. good morning yep same exact shit. and then he carries on i think people wear masks in korea man they, they have a mask for every different event that you're at work social girlfriend it wife. was crazy it's crazy yeah, yeah. and it's just it, it's it's really interesting to see how people unwind because that's really when their true nature comes out right if they get a little bit of alcohol in them, yeah. you get these sloppy drunks sometimes, and yeah. it's just kind of like, oh, you're one of those. And then you get people that are like super quiet, but they Hold start on. drinking. 
what is a Korean phrase? Arse, arse. People who can't handle arse. Ha- <laughs> arse. Is that that's one? Yeah, arse. People who can't handle the alcohol. So arse is alcohol seregi. Oh, yeah. Okay. So alcohol and the seregi is trash. Yeah. So that means you're trash at drinking alcohol. Okay. Yeah. 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 Some slang for the day there. Yeah, and then you got a word called jinsang. Jinsang. Yeah, jinsang means like your. Oh, how do I explain jinsang? Um, let's say you go to a restaurant, right, and you drop your chopstick. You ask for a new chopstick. They come back with the chopstick, and then you see that there's a little smudge on the chopstick. So you call them back, and you're like, I don't like this. Give me another one. And they come back with the chopsticks. And then you look at your spoon, and it's like the smudge there, too. Like, you call them back. Hey, there's a smudge on my spoon. And you keep making these requests over and over and over. That's what a chinsang is. It's somebody that... Like a Karen? It's, yeah, it's like a Karen. Yeah. It's basically a Karen. But Karen's different. A Karen is somebody who doesn't mind their own business and goes up to somebody and just starts shitting on you for what you're doing. Screaming at the manager. That's a Karen, right? Okay. A Chinzang is somebody who... It's like who, someone is a nuisance, annoying? But like constantly. Yeah. So if we go to Ohishik, for example, and somebody gets super drunk and they start like yelling at the people around us and they start slurring their words and tripping and breaking shit, oh, that's okay. Chinzang. Right? Yeah. Like Chinzang nice. is just... It, it just means like a pest. Okay. But it's like... Yeah, that's really the best word to describe it. All right, past. I get it. Yeah. And also then, um, when you go out, um, you also, f- for especially for Korean people, you have two types. The ones that don't get red when they drink. Oh, yeah. And the other ones that just like normal. That's for a shot. That, yeah. yeah. So some Korean people, you'll notice, um, well, I guess foreign people or Westerners as well, when they drink and they get smashed, eventually their faces become red and stuff like that. Yeah. With Korean people... They can, some of them, they can just drink a half a shot or a half a beer or whatever and their f- bodies will go completely red. Yeah. And that's also because of the genes. I've heard that was yeah. the genes of the Korean genes. It's that they have. allergy to alcohol. Allergy to alcohol. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of uh, Koreans are inherently born with uh, an allergy to alcohol and milk. Milk? Yeah. Oh, too Most bad. Koreans are lactose intolerant. All right. Yeah. And then there was another gene that I found interesting. Um, when foreigners, when you come to Korea, you'll notice that when you go to the um, the aisles where you're looking for deodorants or spray or stuff like that. Oh, it's hard to find. You won't find that in no. Korea. No. And um, I was very um, interested, interested to see that the Korean genes, most of them have don't have the gene that make you smell bad when you sweat. Yeah. They don't have that gene. We, we don't. Yeah. We don't. Which it's, it's funny most though of them, though, yeah. Most, yeah. yeah. It's funny because I can smell myself. Like, if I sweat a lot... And it, it cools down. Yeah. Sometimes I smell like I feel I can smell my own bo right, but people around me say they can't smell. Yeah. It. So, I don't think it's that we don't have bo. I think maybe it's just something that doesn't smell bad to other people. Yeah, I'm if sure you must sense. have must have sweat and uh, smell or whatever. But yeah, maybe it just doesn't stink. Right. Like if you if you go to um. If in America, in the not everyone though. Like I said, I when I went to the, we'll talk about the kickboxing gym next. When I was in the kickboxing gym, one or two of those guys, they, they would smell, they huh? would have a little yeah. smell on them. Yeah. But like, if you go to America and you go to the subway, usually the moment you enter the subway tracks, you get hit in the face with this nasty smell, and that's just from the homeless people that are living in the subway, yeah. right? Yeah. And that in her, and I'm not trying to say you know homeless people. I'm sure you have your own situations. You got you got what you got. You got there because of whatever the circumstances were. Yeah. But inherently, they have BO, right? Of course, they stink. And and it just, they don't have a chance to wash that BO. Yeah. And that's what that smell is, along with dirt, grime, and all that other shit that they've accumulated. Yeah. But in Korea, I mean, it's not like we don't have homeless people in Korea. You have homeless people in Korea, but they don't smell as bad. As bad. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they still smell because they're dirty. Yeah. But they don't smell as, as bad, bad yeah. and it, that's that's kind of where you see the difference, mm. the drastic difference. Right? Yeah, um, yeah. You're not going to see deodorant. Your your razors are also. Oh, when you come to Korea, buy a shit ton of razors before you come here, because they're so expensive here. God, oh, they're so expensive. Shaving razors are so expensive here. Yeah. And I don't know why, but there's a few uh, good because companies. Because Koreans shave every single day. That's why. Because they want to keep a clean face. They want to yeah. keep a clean face. Um, so then people know, ah, if someone's going to shave, bump up those prices. Then. Yeah. And there's two companies. I can't remember the exact names. I think one of them is called Wise. That might be an American company. But there's two companies, if you search for them, they have like these monthly monthly subscription packages. 
where you pay like eight thousand won a month or like maybe twenty thousand or something like that something very very cheap mm. and they send you uh replacement razors every month oh really yeah so that Smart business you know plan, they're yeah. kind of trying to work mm. around that but but yeah okay. anyway guys so let's move on to uh so birth rates are low birth rates are low boys look like girls some <laughs> some boys some. look like girls some. but now with like that physical 100 show it's getting more acceptable to look like a man yeah yeah so i hope there's more well shows listen like i don't care about the looks people need to act manly that's well, that the thing too. yeah right. anyway so then um we did we just touched a little bit on the noribang so the noribang is your karaoke rooms right and you have many different types of karaoke rooms uh the one of them is called coin noribang where you can go in and it can be uh, for two people, three people, four people, five people, and then you get your money and you put it in the machine and then you can sing. You can select uh, minutes or amounts of songs. Sometimes now with the newer ones, they have a screen in front and then you just sign them quickly with your phone or whatever, put the money in. I click think it's three click songs the room. or something. For, well, yeah, it depends. It depends, yeah. It yeah. depends on what you want. So you can yeah. put in money, you can choose songs or um, duration of time. Choose your songs and then you go to the room and then you can sing like that you and your friends so and then the so coin Norbang, it started with actually putting in coins, coins to yeah. buy songs yeah but the more the more proper way that they're used now is just smaller rooms it's smaller. rooms just to sing okay and that's what they're used for right yeah. so you can have a whole business of just 20 30 rooms yeah small rooms where two or three people can go inside and just sing and then you can also you see these at arcades you yeah. see these at like the streets right yeah. where they just go in and it's like a booth mm. where like two or three people go inside yeah. and they sing so that's coin norebang yeah and then you were gonna what's explain the what's, yeah what's the name for the normal normal norebang so the other one is called um tajan tajan is tajan yeah i think tajan is the name of one of the karaoke joints but i think it's become like the nomenclature for okay i see these type of norebangs yeah. and what what I mean by these type of norebangs is you go here and on the weekdays you can sing unlimited, on the weekends they charge you for the hour, but the big difference about these norebangs is they're different from karaoke's that you're used to because each you get a room and you could get as big of a room as you like or as small as a room as you like you fit four people or you can fit twenty people. Yeah. But the big difference is that the week the reason why it's free on weekdays is because you have to order food. You have to order something off their menu. Yeah. And that's kind of... it's And the food is good. The food at the Tatsans are, are fucking good. Yeah. Right? And that's where they make their money because it doesn't cost them a lot to run the system and run the sounds and the music. So during the weekdays, you can go, you can spend about... It, it comes to about, about, about 50 bucks because mm. you got to buy two like main dishes or yeah. something. But there are places where you don't have to buy food, but then the price is much higher. Yeah, they charge you more for the hour. Yeah. Right. So if you buy food, your rate gets cheaper or they give you like two hours for free. Go ahead. Yeah. 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 So that's the big difference between Koin Norebang and then like Tajan. Yeah. No, Noretown. That's what it is. Noretown. Noretown. Yeah. Nota. And they say Nota. Yes, sure. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. So Nota that, so. is yeah. Nota Town. Nore means song. So it's basically song town. And these are the places where you go with your friends and you order food and you drink and you sing. And that's that's what it is. Nota. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I forgot for a second, but that's what it is. Yeah. So if, uh, and that's the thing. If any of the, the foreigners, when you go on the Hueshik or whatever, you'll probably be forced into singing a song. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You'll probably be forced Absolutely. like anyone else. Absolutely. Um, you'll be forced into singing a song. And if you sound terrible, don't worry, because someone else in that room is also going to sound terrible. Yeah. Guaranteed. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, Korean people love singing. They do. And most of my Korean friends that I know are pretty good at singing, They're man. They're decent. Yeah. yeah. They're decent. Compared some to the th foreigners, like, yes. Oh, yeah. Some of them are amazing, bro. Yeah. Like, holy shit. How do yeah. you like... And they look like normal people. Yeah. You wouldn't even expect that out of them. Then all of a sudden, mic, boom. And it's like, holy yes, fuck. Where did you hiding come hiding this. Yeah. yeah. You're hiding this all the time. Yeah. It's like Mr. J, right? He yeah. has a little alcohol. He starts slapping your bag. You go to work. Yeah. And he's like he was a terrible him. singer. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was terrible. Oh. Um, but, but that's yes. karaoke. That's one yeah. of the really Koi fun. Norebang, and then Noreta, Nota, Nota, Noretown. Yeah, and then you also get uh, love Norebangs. Oh, that's where I've never been to one. Yeah, but so. it's um, but they do exist. Yeah. So yeah. apparently, and this this is just from my knowledge of hearing this from people. I've never been to one, and it's it's very interesting. It, it's very interesting, and it gets very. There, apparently there's different scales of this too so scales yeah yeah and what i mean by that is like the most basic scale is like 
you go there and you pay you order alcohol you have to order like a bottle of alcohol and when you order that bottle of alcohol what comes is hours right like singing hours yeah but you don't go there to sing what you do is a selection of girls come out and you choose the girls that you want to drink with and they basically become your drinking partners oh you just sit down and drink with them you sit down and drink with them uh. now that's the most basic now again this is from what i'm hearing the most mm-hmm. basic is that and then half of that is just you go there for company basically you okay. drink with somebody a female companion for company and they have this for men too uh for females too the other way around where you can choose the men and get their company okay they have those too yeah so whatever sexual preference you have you go there you check it um you you have somebody for company half of that is just going to be you pay for their company and you drink with them they pour you their alcohol they pour you drinks and you you know flirt and talk and chat and then it's up to you if you want to try to like get her number and then try to like develop some sort of relationship okay. and try to sleep with her basically right yeah um the other half from what i from what i hear is you actually just pay the money the other scale you're talking about the other scale the other yeah. half of that not even the scale oh. we're still on this bottom level oh shit yeah so on half of that you just the other half is you go there you pay these girls money and it's just prostitution that's what it is you go to these places yeah. they drink with you for about an hour and then you pay the money and you just go sleep they're, they're like apparently there there's like motels nearby or motels on the same building or like rooms or whatever the case and you you pay these women and they sit and drink with you for about an hour and then you just go and you have sex with them like it's just prostitution so that's the the lowest yeah. barrier that's the well least. you don't have to explain like we, we have imaginations we can yeah imagine, so, yeah, what imagine if is. that's the least imagine how high it goes but yeah. the highest that i'm aware of that i heard about is like the king service where it's the service the sexual service begins from the moment you enter the door and you're on the elevator. So let your imagination run wild there. But the moment you get on the elevator to go to your room, that's where the, but, um, the service you're begins. you're going to have to pay a pretty price for oh, this, I'm assuming. Of course. Yeah. The more services you get, apparently, the the, the higher the price, yeah. right? Um, but that's the different types of karaoke. So okay. don't always walk into a karaoke thinking... Mm. It's going to be like, you You want to go to a nota if you're yeah. thinking karaoke. Or coin or a bong, you'll see outside there's like a a microphone, usually like a, you know, those blow up things yeah. some places. What? But if you don't go to the ones where you see the girls singing, I think that's the, the red flag. So there's, you got to be careful because some of these old nota bongs too, they look like regular nota bongs. They don't, so what you have to learn to differentiate is between nota and nota bong. So... Nota and Norebang are both karaoke's, and if you go to Norebang though, um, there is you go there and it's just like a regular Norebang, right? But I think what happens is, oh, this happened to me, where the woman was like, I went with like three or four women and like two other guys. It was a heshe, and they were like, "Are you gonna be calling women?" And I'm like, "No, we're what? I'm here as a group. We're here to sing. It's just, isn't this karaoke?" She's like. Well, no. If you're gonna be, if you're not gonna be calling women, it's okay. Just go, go enjoy yeah. your room. Okay. So uh, then I asked my coworkers about it, and they were like, "So men go to these just the regular looking nota banks, and then they have something called um, a, a tomi. It's a helper. Okay. So you call, and there's a company that sets it up. And oh, so it's not the Norebang itself? No. So there's uh, the ones I was talking about before. You go there and the girls are there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, you go there and then you call this person mm. and they bring girls to you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can't go into a place expecting what we talked about in terms of Nota, right? You have to make sure you know where you're going into mm. because Nota is really the one that you want to go to. And you'll know. You go inside and you see these young workers dressed in uniforms like... The, the the company uniform and they're very bright and cheery looking very nice yeah it looks nice it's bright that's the big one okay right you go to the norebangs and it's kind of like dark and musky and quiet and then Shady. like there's like old ajuma in the front and there's a smell in the place not necessarily <laughs> smell. They're, they're pretty good about sanitizing yeah but it, yeah it's like this musky like oh, yeah. you can feel it in the air it's like okay. oh this isn't like a bright atmosphere yeah. sorry i was very loud yeah, the uh, air, there's an airport like right next to us. So uh, I think well. the window is still open. That's why. Oh, did we? Yeah. Oh. Um, anyway, cut that out. 
Yeah. Right, last one to touch on quickly, PC bong. So if you guys are um, gamers, right, PC gamers, Korea will also be a very nice place for you guys. Uh, I'm sure most of you know that are in, that are in Korea. But like with Norebang, you can go to a PC bong, which is... Um, Sorry, bong means room. Yeah, Yeah. bong means room. So Norebang means yeah. song room, PC bong is PC room. Yeah, and uh, bong means bread. Bong. Bang. Yeah. You have bang, yeah. which is room. Room. And then bang. Bang means yeah. bread. <laughs> anyway, um, so PC bang, <coughs> you will go into this uh, PC. You'll see the, the signs everywhere says PC, PC bang, PC, 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 whatever. Um, not always, but you go, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. All later. right. So you can go into this building and then um, I've only been to one. So I'm not really glued up about, about this thing. So I've been to one. And then in the front also you have the computer screen. You pay your money. You choose your computer. And then it gives you a time or whatever. Yeah, you pay for the hour. You pay for the hour. And the more hours you pay for up front, the more, uh, the more you can pay for more hours up front to get a discount. And then it gets cheaper, yeah. <coughs> and you can make a membership. And sign it's... Up. And it, all of that it's very cheap yeah it's super cheap it's super cheap and the computers are super high quality yeah it's the best computers with the best internet microphones headphones everything you name it comfortable seats and you can eat there and the food is amazing there yeah for some reason the, the ramen at the at the pc yeah. bongs are so you much you can better. eat yeah. yeah it's amazing so you can go there and play your games and whatever and all the games are installed um there was a big issue in the past where like for example if you had a wow account they used oh, key what account? world of warcraft oh yeah the um or diablo or like lineage was a big game in Korea, right? But if you had those accounts, there was an issue in the past where hackers would install key loggers into the PC bunks. And what that does is it steals your account. But basically people will steal your account because they can make money by selling these equipments. Oh, so shit. the reason I'm saying this is when you go to a PC bunk, you have every game you can possibly think of already installed there, right? It's already installed, but you still have to log in with your account to play with your account. So once you log in with, it's not that much of a problem now, but there are still instances of like your shit getting stolen. So just be careful that it's not an account that like you use for money. Like, like, wow. Okay. World of Warcraft, you can make money from it by selling shit, right? Yeah, yeah. So if it's accounts like that, you just want to be a little bit more careful about it. Yeah, that. yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, that, that's really the only thing. Um, the other thing, so you're going to see PC Bang, but don't always think it's the ones we're talking about because some of them, the other ones and you'll you'll be able to tell a little bit but in the front they have these stickers they have the film stickers oh, the gambling ones yeah uh, on the window yeah you can tell you yeah. can tell because mm. you'll see like oh new new like like hearts like, yeah some stupid game yeah like dogs like yeah, candy five crush dogs, type candy, vibes yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit like that and you yeah. see those stickers and if you look at that that's where you go inside and the computers are connected to like a it's like a slot machine the computers so you i think the way it works is you pay for money you pay money and they give you credits on like the computer you're gonna sit on okay and it's like a regular slot machine yeah 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 and then if you win you go back and you claim the money from them i guess uh, that's kind of but it's basically gambling yeah 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 it's the game you'll see the difference like um like james said there's like these stupid stickers outside and you'll see card games and fucking candy cross type of games and animals and, like, and yeah, shit like, like animated that animated so, yeah. characters yeah you'll see that that's gonna give you like okay this looks like gambling or whatever yeah if you've played a slot machine before you'll know it by yeah, looking at it yeah yeah and you might want to check it out but i know that they're rigged 100 percent. i've heard this they're rigged so don't waste your money there if anything you're a foreigner just go to a regular casino because you can right? yeah yeah. Or just go to Norebang or go to PC Bang and go have a good time over there. Yeah. If you're um, shy of singing in front of other people, the nice thing about the coin Norebang, you can go alone, right? Yeah. You can go alone, put your coins in there, and like it's closed or whatever. No one can see you singing. Uh, they can hear you a little bit, but they no, can nobody hear really you. cares. No, a little bit. They can fucking hear you, yeah. bro. Yeah. <laughs> you walk into a Norebang, you hear everyone. Yeah. 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 Um, which is quite funny but no one can see your face so if you want to go practice singing if you love singing but you're shy perfect place to go yeah yeah you don't have to sing in your apartment and disturb your neighbors or stuff like that no 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 um i think that covers pretty much all the oh you got to talk about mma boxing and do you want to start with that next time uh no because you're just quick okay. right so in the last episodes we touched on the hobbies and the hiking and the this and this another thing if there's anyone who wants to do like mma or boxing or jujitsu, korea is also a good place for you guys um 
basically, especially the bigger towns, but even in the smaller towns, you'll have a gym that does boxing, MMA, or kickboxing, or even jujitsu. Um, they have hub, <coughs> what's the other one? Hapkido and Taekwondo. Judo. Yeah, ju- judo. judo. Yeah, they have all these places, um, which is pretty big. Um, if you're lucky, you'll have like a kickboxing or MMA gym in your city. Like I had one in my old city. They're pretty common. Yeah, it's it's um, super nice, and the, the people are always friendly and super helpful. And I know with jujitsu as well, um, a couple of my friends are doing jujitsu. Yeah, it's getting big in Korea. Yeah, and I mean they always say the people are so nice and like very welcoming. Mm. So I guess it's that community. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to be shy. Oh, I'm a foreigner. Maybe they won't accept me and stuff. Yeah, Koreans are really good at that. Um, whatever activity you're doing, they're mm-hmm. really good at making a community and being like taking care of each other yeah. in that community. Yeah. And you you form a lot of friends by doing oh, these for activities. Sure. Yeah. Like when I was at my kickboxing gym then they always invited me for drinks afterwards oh. or eating chicken or doing this or doing that. They always made me f- feel like one of them. And as a foreigner, I never felt like an outsider, yeah. As a foreigner you get even more special treatment than normal. Yeah. Just because they're so fascinated by you. Right? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. I want to practice my English with these guys. Like, yeah. Oh, let's go. Yeah. Well, luckily for me, no one wanted to practice English because everyone's English was so bad. No. Um, and obviously my Korean was terrible. So I guess that's what helped my career increase a little bit. Yeah. Especially like the, but a lot of the terminology in the gym is the same as in English, as a Congress, yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. So we used to do the same stuff. But yeah, very cool people. And yeah, those are just, just putting it out there um, if you come to Korea and you have that in mind like one of my friends uh, Cam he actually got his amateur boxing license in Korea well wow. yeah so he trained and trained and trained and eventually went for the licensing and got his amateur boxing license I think yeah. what it comes down to is Korea you can literally do anything that you can think of there isn't <laughs> anything so, yeah. that you can't do here mm. Um, you can even surf. The waves aren't great, but you could do oh, surfing. Yeah, surfing. Yeah. Surfing terrible in Korea. Yeah. You can go <laughs> snowboarding and skiing, which is terrible too because the mountains suck. You don't yeah. get a lot it, of it snow. depends. You might get lucky and uh, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Like once get a, in a get year, a nice maybe. snowstorm or something. Maybe. Mm. But for the most part, like there if you want to have fun, Korea is the place to be, right? You can, yeah. And the more money you have, the more fun you'll have. Yeah, That's the, just true everywhere. But like if you have foreigners telling you there's nothing you're doing in Korea, is you're talking to the wrong foreigners. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys. Okay, cool. Um, I think that's a wrap, right? Yeah. So uh, thanks for listening. I We started putting up a lot of shorts. So if you're watching this episode, we already have about four or five shorts up. We're going to be uploading shorts every week. And the plan is we upload shorts that show previews for the upcoming episode. So if you don't have the time to... I mean, it'd be great if you listen to the whole podcast. But if you don't have the time, check out the shorts and see if it's something that interests you and then you can try to listen to the whole episode afterwards yeah. if um, something in, isn't interesting for you there. Yeah. Uh, we also have Instagram. Follow us on Instagram at howtokorea1. Email us at howtokorea1 at gmail.com if you have any questions or comments. Leave comments on YouTube. Like and subscribe. And it just keeps growing, huh? The more things we... The action yeah, items we I request so. from our viewers. The main thing, the main thing is uh, with the shorts that we'll be trying to show the people is that we're not only sitting talking about how to do things in Korea. It's not like a how-to channel. No. We talk about a lot of stuff and some of it might be interesting to you, some of it might not be. But yeah, just trying to get the word out there. And uh, I guess that's it. Yeah. 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 So we'll see you guys next week. All right, guys. Awesome. Have a nice weekend. Goodbye. And then we get sayo. All right. So if you like this video, please click subscribe in the middle over here and check out our links below under the video. And also make sure to click on the notification icon so that you can stay up to date with our future episodes. And be sure to leave some comments below and let us know what you would like us to discuss in future episodes.